Hey, I promised a video about the journal 6-2, uh, uh, and I am going to deliver on it. Now, I wanted to cover this journal because I am beginning to understand the problems that some students are beginning to anticipate, I should say, some problems that might arise for students. And this one might be a difficult one to work with. This deals with uh, fairy tales and or myths and how um, they have affected our uh, society from the time there, uh, of their inception into modern times. And we did touch on this somewhat in the, uh, um, in the module on gender issues where we talked about many of you use the example of the princess waiting to be saved. But now you're going to examine some other aspects and how these tales have been ingrained into our psyches and we still refer to them. So uh, one of the things you will be examining is what is the moral of the story? What are the listeners or the readers, and this is about oral storytelling, what are the readers supposed to learn from these stories? because they are highly didactic and then that is because that is their aim to teach a lesson. The Three Bears teaches us not to go out into the woods by ourselves and not to break and enter. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood teaches us that we should not go off the path, we should not talk to strangers. And every fairy tale has this type of didacticism about it and it will be your uh, duty to figure out what that moral of the story is. Now, what uh, the next prompt is, how does hearing the story differ from reading it? And it says, consider the voice inflection, and in the case of totally oral traditions, how the tale might change according to the teller. Now, long ago, back at the beginning of the class, I mentioned, and I'm pretty sure some other students mentioned, the, uh, the game telephone or gossip, where you whisper something into someone's ear, you're in a circle, and you whisper something, and it goes around, and by the time it gets to the last person, it's usually quite different. This is what happens in oral storytelling sometimes. Sometimes the story remains exactly the same, but not usually. So keep in mind how it would uh, differ from sto uh, storyteller to storyteller. But I also want you to keep in mind that the written word is not the same as the spoken word. When I teach composition, and I have taught composition a lot, and I still teach it, I always have to caution my students do not write as you speak, because there are many things in speaking that do not carry over into writing. Now, in formal academic writing, there are some standards that we have to, uh, to watch out for. But even in writing fiction and in informal writing, these things also apply. For example, when I am face-to-face -face with uh, you or with somebody, whether in real life or in, um, in this video, and somebody says, where is the rocking chair? I can point and I can say, it's over there. Now, if somebody were to send an email to me saying, where is the rocking chair? And I send an email back saying, it's over there. Of course, that person's not going, going to understand what it is that we, under, that we, we mean or what I mean specifically, voice inflection plays a huge part. And if you have ever sat in a classroom, let me get a book here, ever sat in a classroom listening to an instructor or one of your peers read like this, saying too many people are going to college is not the same as saying that the average student does not do need to know about history, science, and great works of art, music, and literature. Boring, but if, the, if that same um, idea or those same ideas were encapsulated and the speaker spoke with inflection and emphasis, we're going to pay more attention. So those are some aspects that differ, uh, that, that are different from reading something and hearing it. And then the last prompt, how does seeing a performance, movie or play, 
differ from both reading or hearing a story? How does visualization change how we perceive a tale? Well, first of all, there are big differences between a stage play and a movie. If you have ever seen a recording of a stage play that is just, just filmed the actors on stage, it loses a huge amount from the translation of being there and seeing it to being uh, filmed. And uh, uh, I, 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 I know what I'm going to say, it's just that it escaped me for a second. Oedipus is an example. Uh, I teach uh, an introduction to lit course and we read Oedipus. And I uh, post a movie of a stage projection of Oedipus and the students say, well, I don't really like this. Well, I don't really like it either because movies are different from stage plays and both movies and plays are different from reading or just listening. Modern audiences um, have a much different conception of reading something than did our ancestors did before the advent of the motion picture. We can visualize these things in uh, these things, uh, things that we read so much more in our in in our mind's eye than perhaps our ancestors did because we see them in movies. I do. I've talked to many other people who do as well. And so that is uh, one of the difference uh, as well. However, I also feel that we are so inundated with visual media, movies and television, uh, that sometimes our own creativity and our own originality is submerged or suppressed. And I think uh, sometimes, though, when we read a work, no, not sometimes, most of the times, when we read a work first, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, those movies have uh, been extremely popular and the books were extremely popular before the movies came out. But did the movies accurately portray what it was you saw in your mind when you read the books? Take any film adaptation of any book you've ever read or even a graphic novel. I have not read the graphic novels of The Walking Dead, but I have friends who have, and they say, well, you know, the series is, is interesting and it's good, but it's not like the originals. So in some ways, seeing it um, played out can be quite different than what we visualize. Now, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Maybe it gives us a new perspective. Maybe we're disappointed. And it really depends upon the individual and how well the movies are made or the miniseries are made. I have seen many movies that just did not measure up to the book. I enjoyed the Lord of the Rings movies, but I have to admit it had been over 30 years since I read the books. So they weren't as fresh in my mind as they were would have been had I seen the movies right after reading the, uh, the books. Other adaptations, extremely disappointing. I won't even go into that Beowulf travesty with Angelina Jolie as, as Grindel's mother or other uh, adaptations that I have seen. Some others have been, have been great. Stephen King's It, I enjoyed that. The Stand, which were the miniseries, enjoyed that. Other adaptations of Stephen King's movies I've seen have been, or books, excuse me, have been very disappointing. And yeah, I'm a big Stephen King fan and I'm not going to deny that. So keep some of these aspects in mind when you are thinking about uh, your journal entry and the prompts that uh, you will have been asked to address. So, um... I'm going to stop there, and uh, wow, I battled on for nine minutes. I hope that you get something of value from this, uh, from this video and that it helps you in some way to uh, better understand what is needed and required for this journal.